think it's an issue we can do something about. It's a bad piece of legislation that can be changed. And that, that is why I think it is something to be worked on and to, to really try and change. Yeah. Look from the mud, the people walking, the people talking, people talking. For some... Hello, everyone. Welcome to Seeds. Um, we've got the amazing Jane Slater with us um, that we're going to be talking to. I'm Pell Levy. I'm one of the um, integrating BSc students at Global Health. I'm Jess. I'm a final year Global Health student. So hi, my name's Jane Slater. I'm the Deputy Chief Executive Officer at Transform Drug Policy Foundation and the Campaign Manager of Anyone's Child Families for Safer Drug Control. Amazing. Um, so just to kind of start off the questions, tell us about your work in drug policy or harm reduction. I've been working in drug policy reform now for nearly 15 years. Um, I've been working at Transform Drug Policy Foundation, which is a sort of charitable think tank. We produce lots of evidence to demonstrate how the drug war isn't working for families and communities around the country, and also to create a vision of what a world um, where drugs are controlled and regulated might look like. We campaign for evidence-based drug policies. Um, I also run a campaign called Anyone's Child, and this is all about telling the very real human stories of those that are impacted by, drug, um, by our drug laws. So that's telling the stories of families who've lost loved ones to overdose, whose children might have been criminalised, and to really sort of demonstrate the, few, the full range of human consequences of how this drug war is impacting people across the UK. So why is drug reform important to you? Because drug policy is so obviously wrong. Look, we've got a 50 year old policy that has clearly been totally ineffective at reducing drug use, its primary aim. But the more you look at it, the more harm it is causing. So this is from fueling a massive criminal market, it's making drug use much more dangerous, it's fueling an overdose crisis, we're exacerbating social inequalities, and it's costing billions of pounds trying to enforce this utterly failing policy. And I think it's the work I do with anyone's child and the families who really are at the sort of front line of this failing policy that has kept me really committed to this campaign and to working for reform. And I suppose to be positive, I think it's an issue we can do something about. It's a bad piece of legislation that can be changed. And that, that is why I think it is something to be worked on and to, to really try and change. Anyone's Child, I think, is incredible. I was looking at, at the like website and everything you guys do, and it's just so cool. Um, and I guess, I mean, you must have so many moments, but when was the moment that you kind of felt that drug policy reform was needed? Um, I think I first sort of started to question drug policy. Um, I had the privilege of doing some teaching in um, India in a drug producing area. Um, where it was a death penalty offence for production of drugs. And then very quickly afterwards, I went to university at the University of Amsterdam, where cannabis, the same drug that was being cultivated in India, is, um, well, there's, it's an interesting bit of drug policy over there, but it, it, it's legally available for sale and you can consume it. And looking at these two different approaches to the same drug in very short succession, really led me to question how you could have two such different policies for what the same substance. And also, I suppose I was at the University of Manchester when I went to, to Amsterdam University, and I had all my English friends coming over to Amsterdam and going, woohoo, look at all this cannabis, whereas all the Dutch students had a much more sensible approach to it. And again, watching these two different attitudes towards uh, cannabis really made me start to research and think about drug policy as an issue. Such a great um, insight into like the different perspectives and um, and so sort of what do you think is the biggest barrier there is in drug policy reform? 
It's an interesting question. I think probably what I think the biggest barrier to reform is, 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 is around the stigma of drugs. I think it, it, it's huge and it's this other ring that goes on that almost means that people who are impacted by drugs are almost not human. It's this real other ring that goes on. And we can see this through the media imagery that's used around any story about drugs, some of the language that's used around people who use drugs. And I think it's this stigma that has made looking at the evidence and really um, listening to the evidence so much easier to ignore. And so to me, that's one of the biggest barriers and something we're definitely trying to cut through through the Anyone's Child campaign. Yeah. I mean, stigma is, I think, even, I mean, even before I was a part of like global health and everything and meeting Jen, I think, I don't think I even gave that much thought um, to it. And being a medical student as well, like you're very much taught. I think when we had that session with you, Jane and Mary, um, we talked about it, like how as a medical student, you just have that one set, one track mind where you're just kind of told ecstasy kills and that's it. And then we never mention it again. And it's never about like how it's actually impacted the people themselves. Um, it's kind of similar to that. Do you have a conversation that you've had with someone recently or before um, about drug policy that's kind of changed or impacted the way that you consider drug policy? The conversations I've had that frustrates me the most is um, I've obviously met a lot of MPs through my work um, with Transform and Anyone's Child. And I think what frustrates me most is when you meet an MP and they say, oh, you know what, I totally agree with you. Our drug laws are failing and we need to reform them, but I'm not gonna say that. And for me, that, that's utterly frustration. They're terrified of the sort of public reaction to, to speaking out on this issue. Um, but I do think that's starting to change and we are witnessing more and more MPs speaking out. And it's why I would say to anyone listening, it's really important that you write to your MP and encourage them to speak out on this issue. Because I think we need to be giving our MP support that the public is increasingly backing reform and they need to hear this message so that they have more confidence to speak out when they know that the policy is clearly failing us. I think the, the stories that have, the, 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 the conversation I've had that probably has made me most committed to drug policy reform is meeting, um, so anyone's child has got some international branches and we have one um, branch that operates in Mexico. Um, and I've met, mothers in Mexico whose weekends are now filled with going around mass graves, um, digging for body parts and going for forensic testing to try and find out if they are their children. Um, I, it just horrifies me some of the stories in Mexico because for a lot of the families there, they need that kind of closure to know whether their child is, is gonna come home. And that real lack of uh, accountability around those deaths and the, the real trauma that some of those families are in. I mean, I really find that hard to, 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 to put aside and not make me want to continue campaigning for reform. Like opening up discussions with people what would you sort of say to someone who is undecided about drug policy reform not quite sure where they sit in their view on it I think I I, I think I tell them to, 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 to first of all to try and listen to some of the families involved with anyone's child and to listen to some of their stories because you know the, these these are people many of whom have lost their, their children to drugs you know it's the least likely people to want to make drugs more available let's say um, I think they make a very compelling case for why we need reform. And I'd also urge people to look at the evidence. I mean, there is stacks of evidence that demonstrates what we're doing isn't right and that other approaches could be better. And I think it, it, it's uncomfortable for some people to accept, but I think we really need an adult conversation around this. I think we need to accept as a society that drug use does exist, whether we like it or not. We have to accept that fact. And then we need to have an adult conversation which says, look, given these substances are, are within our society, how do we make it safer? For me, that's fundamental. No, definitely. And I guess, what can we do as individuals to help 
Okay, well, for any individuals who are interested in getting involved with this, the first thing I would encourage everyone to do is to write to their MP. We have template letters available on both the Transform and Anyone's Child website to help with this, and we can support anyone around a meeting with their MP, but write to them and demonstrate that you support reform. I think that's really important. Also encourage you just to have conversations with your friends and families. Start to have conversations like the one we're having. See what people do think, because for a lot of people, I just think they haven't thought about it. And actually, you can bring people a long way um, by just starting some of those conversations. Encourage people to join us at our Lobby of Parliament this year on the 27th of October. We'll be going en masse with the families of anyone's child and um, a number of Transform um, activists to call on our MPs to start speaking out on the failure of the Misuse of Drugs Act and our current drug laws.